Salute to the people. What's good with it? It's your boy Fluence. I'm back at it again with boxing news. Fluence boxing side of the game. Black Goose TV family. Salute. Much love, positivity, and blessings. Fuck all the bullshit. Stay away from the stress. Stay blessed. Y'all already know what it is. Man, we got another reaction video coming up for y'all. We are going to be reacting to old man Bob Erm. The reason why I chose this particular video, man, first and foremost, man, it's a little slow on the boxing side of the game. Um, that is the most accurate when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, everything that's happening in the community. Other than that, it's a lot of speculative, a lot of alleged leads, a lot of rumors, right? Um, so rather than me picking up on that and talking about that, I'm like, let's go ahead and talk about some things or react to some things that's really happening in the real time. And the reason why I'm choosing old man Bob Earl for this specific video uh, is because obviously, in my opinion, we're coming off one of the most historical moments in boxing history in the last five years when it came to what Devin Haney did to George Cambosis. Regardless how you felt about the fight, regardless how you felt about Devin Haney, um, you can't take away what he has done historically in boxing and all of the things that he put on the line in order for it to get done. Um, so with that being said, I was definitely interested to see how Bob Aram feels about this particular situation. Now, we all know Bob is, you know what I'm saying, 125 years old. And a lot of shit he says, he's really not even thinking about and he really doesn't have a real stance on anything because like look man if i'm that old i ain't thinking about nothing too hard you feel me like that's just like nigga please man i'm just trying to stay alive type shit but even with that being the case and i'm saying i still gotta you know what i'm saying stress some light show some love and you know what i'm saying show a little bit of admiration and respectfulness when it comes to what bob Ram has to say about particular fighters because Devin haney was someone who was not even on bob's uh, uh spectrum or let me take that back i'm rewinding back Devin haney is new to the spectrum of Bob when it comes to being up under his entity, right? Shakur was the guy he was promoting as the young gun coming up. You know, Bob, Bob is very good when it comes to his promotional side of the game. He doesn't really speak about anyone outside the top rank unless it really makes sense or there's a potential fight. Um, and so he never really spoke about Devin Haney. And, you know, for him to end up signing Devin Haney, I'm very interested to see what he thinks about him, especially when I think it would have been very lucrative for George Cambosos to beat Devin Haney um, and then have a George Cambosos versus Lomachenko fight. So um, that's basically what this reaction is. I just want to interested in what he has to say. He doesn't say a lot. So we up in this thing. Salute to the people as always, man. Hit the like video. Uh, excuse me. Hit the like button as always for this video, man. Uh, give me an algorithm. The like button helps that a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you're not part of the family. You know, notification game so you know whenever i'm dropping content and then most importantly baby comment on this video man please comment on this joint please i'm praying i'm asking i'm begging you comment on all the videos you watch whether it's negative whether it's positive whether it's in the middle i really don't give a fuck i ain't no sensitive nigga it's how life go but please help your boy get an algorithm by commenting but let's go ahead and get into this reaction video from old man bob erm speaking on the when Devin Haney had over Kimbosos and what he thought about it. Uh, and, and maybe he will even talk about the Lomachenko uh, uh, potential fight. So let's get it. Question, could you could you kind of could you kind of grade um, Edgar Belanger's um, last performance against Steve Rose? A work in progress. It was not a very good performance. What are you kind of expecting from him with this performance right now? I'm sorry, that's where that, that's where sometimes it's like it's like Bob. As much as like I'm like, there's a lot of claims behind Bob. Obviously, he has a historical amount of claims that aren't very necessarily positive things. But if there's something you can't take away. The man is a straight shooter. The nigga's gonna tell you like it is in front of your face or not behind your face. Whatever the case, he don't hold back. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely appreciate that from old man Bob. He said, a lot of work to be expected from Berlingo. And I was able to catch that uh, particular fight, even though Fluence Lounge, we did go live for it. Um, I was too focused on a couple other more inter entertaining fights. But the little bit I did see, um, I'm not um, disagreeing with him. It was a very underwhelming performance from Berlingo. Well, I want to see the old Edgar uh, with the dynamite in his fist. I mean, that's what people come to see. And let's see if we're going to see it tomorrow night. Do you think the 16 first round knockouts were a detriment to his development overall? Well, if he, if those are the only knockouts he's going to get, sure. But uh, hopefully that's just the start of a, a group of knockouts. And his last couple of fights weren't knockouts, but that happens. And uh, like uh, uh, Aaron Judge doesn't hit a home run every time he comes to bat. You know, I got a chance to talk to Edgar's new trainer, and he was telling me that within maybe about two years or so, two or three years, he feels like he'll be ready for, for David Benavidez. Do you feel like that's the same time frame, or do you think that'll happen a little bit sooner? Well, again, I have no idea. That depends on Edgar. That depends on his trainer. Uh, you know, fighters develop uh, quickly 
or slowly or not at all. So that's what we'll have to see. Can we switch gears and talk about Devin Haney? How impressed were you with his, with his performance last well, week? Lovely, yeah, into lovely it. young man, nice father. Uh, they went to the Lions Den in Melbourne, uh, the Cambosa's hometown. I was there. The father got in the night before. Uh, uh, he put on a dazzling performance. Uh, he's the real goods. Can you? I love I, him. I know you said you want. You're interested in matching him up against Lomachenko. Bob is such a goddamn straight shooter, and I love it. He definitely always get. This is the thing about Bob, right? Where it's like a love hate relationship for him. He always, if you're a great fighter and you do what you do. He always gives props. He never takes that away. The problem with Bob, though, is he's so stuck in his ways that it's almost like if you're a young fighter, it's good to be with him because he'll pay you the money and he'll make sure that, you know, you continue to develop and get into a position where you can continue to make that money. The problem is when you get to a point where you now in boxing like you need a big fight you have to do a co-promotional deal or you you know what i'm saying you have to fight this guy that's in a different promotion that's when the problem comes with being with bob and you saw that with terence crawford because a lot of people don't understand because a lot of you guys say you're boxing heads but you're really not boxing heads if you were real boxing heads you would understand the relationship terence crawford and bob aram had over the years um when bob when terence crawford first signed with bob aram he was given his first paycheck with bob was over a mil or a mil exactly that was unheard of at the time. I won't say unheard of, but it was unheard of for someone who didn't have the magnitude of a pay-per-view draw to be paid that amount of money. Terrence Crawford has been making a meal or over a meal for the majority of his career. And a lot of you guys want to criticize him. Oh, well, you've been with Bob. Why don't you sign with PBC? PBC is not offering that type of money for Terrence Crawford, okay? They're not even offering that type of money for Keith Thurman, Earl Spence until you prove yourself. So Terrence was making this amount of money before he was a pay-per-view draw. Why? Because ESPN and top rank aren't built off of pay-per-view buys. They're built off of cable television. So Bob was able to shelter or, excuse me, give out that type of money to Terrence Crawford because we don't have to worry about getting it back. We're already getting a certain, similar to what the UFC did when they signed with the ESPN deal. It went away from, oh, we have to sell this amount of pay-per-views to we need to put this amount of shows on in a year to make sure that we meet the quota for ESPN. It's the same thing with top rank, guys. So, um, Stop being so naive and stupid. Terrence Crawford is making so much money for the longest period of time. And you have to understand the incentive behind Terrence Crawford resigning is not only the amount of money he's going to be made, but also behind that, if we're saying, hey, uh, he re-upped back with uh, Bob Aram and Top Break two, three years ago, because I see some people trying to criticize him saying, oh, you had a chance to fight. Uh, it was Polly Malajanaji on the uh, pro boxing TV. He said, oh, we had a chance to uh, uh, sign with PBC, but you chose to resign with Bob Aram two years ago. The reason why is because he offered him more money. And when you offer him more money, I'm pretty sure within that stipulation was I can offer you this amount of money and then I can get you to fight you want. So Terrence said, OK, why would I go with PBC who said I'm only going to offer you half of what he's paying you, but I'm going to get you to fight you want. And even if I beat these guys, I still won't be making near amount of the money I will make with top rank, even if I don't fight these guys. But I can go with top rank and get more, you know, more than what you know, uh, uh, double what they're offering me at PBC. And he's telling me I can get you those fights. So that's where people are not understanding how this goes. And it almost makes me feel like, like, guys, like we all work. We're all in business. Like we're all making money. Like, how do you not understand how negotiations go? So for you guys to make it seem like it's so outlandish and so out of worldly that Terrence Crawford is suing Bob Earl is for racism and it's for not uh, uh, um, um, paying him the amount of money or not getting the amount of money that he expected to get. It has nothing to do with the found the base salary of what he's being paid he's talking about in my opinion i'm not sure but i think he's talking about you promised me these fights i did not get them this is what i would have made off of them and so now let's talk about it and i think the only reason it came up is because bob was the first to put out there oh terrence crawford i'm losing money on you where i, I lost so much money i can build a, a house in malibu that's where those that's where it's like terrence crawford is like oh nigga you about to put out a narrative like I'm making you lose money, but nigga, you signed me to this crazy ass deal and said you can get me the fights I want and you couldn't get them. I'm not asking you to pick a winner, but just based on how Haney looked and how Loma looked his past two fights, um, who would you give the edge to in that fight? Well, you know, I just don't know. That's a, that's why they we put the fights on and that's why they buy the tickets. Is that the fight that you're aiming to kind of go with Haney instead of the Cambosa well, rematch? No, they have we're obligated to do a Cambosa rematch. Gotcha. And you know, and 
<laughs> and people are not going to understand lingo. Look, I'm in sales, so I hear words like it's different from y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I hear words and I hear something specific, you can get an idea of what the motivation behind somebody is. Bob Urham literally showed you his motivation for making the rematch with Kambosos. He don't want to make that rematch. You see, he said, no, we're obligated. He said, we are obligated to make the rematch. If he felt like it was something that should be happening and he wants Cambosos to win or it was a close fight, he would have been like, no, we got to make the rematch. It would have been a very different set of words uh, 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 spilled out from Bob. But he said, we are obligated to do the rematch. You can tell he does not want that rematch to happen because he's like, nigga, what's the point? Just like everybody else. Yeah. Well, he's probably not saying nigga, what's the point? He's probably saying, what's the, well, shit, he's probably saying nigga, what's the point? Shit. <laughs> The Haney's are honorable people, uh, and, and they'll do what they're contracted to do. Gotcha. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. That was good. That was a good uh, uh, interview. Salute to that, uh, brother. He, he has very, very good questions, very direct questions. And then Bob did a good job answering them. So uh, that was my opinion on that uh, reaction video or my perspective at the very least. Let me see what you guys think about it. As always, man, drop it in the comments below. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not part of the motherfucking family. Notification gang is always on the Arnold nigga side of the game. I'll be back. But my weapons and my weapons have to do with just me just talking shit. So, love y'all.